What's up everyone, back for another beer review, and today I'll be reviewing a beer from the Maine Beer Company, and they're out of Freeport, Maine, and this is their lunch. So this is an IPA that comes in at 7% alcohol by volume, no IBUs listed, time of review, and this bottle is exactly three weeks old. So you can choose to believe it or not, and I choose to not believe it, but it's the truth. This is the first ever beer from Maine that I am reviewing on the channel. Not Maine as in the state, but Maine as in the Maine Beer Company uh, brewery. And the reason why it's insane is I've been drinking their stuff for like about 10 years, back into like 2013, 14 range. And the reason, there's actually three reasons why I have not reviewed a beer from this brewery on the channel. The first one is that we used to see great distribution of their beer here in the Buffalo, New York area. And over the past like four or five years, you don't see them that often. And when you do see them, a lot of times they're not super fresh. So that, that would be the second reason. The third reason is the price point on their beers are quite expensive here. We'll talk about that at the end, but they're a bit pricey. This is a 500 milliliter bottle, so 16.9 fluid ounces. However, that's only 0.9 fluid ounces bigger than a 16 fluid ounce can. So uh, the price point's a little bit wonky. However, this is an iconic East Coast um, you know, IPA, it is. I've had this beer numerous times before, so full disclosure. The first time I had this one, it, it was kind of underwhelming. I still enjoyed it but I heard a lot of hype about it and it wasn't as amazing as I thought it was gonna be. However, it was a bit older, I think. I wanna say that bottle was maybe like six six weeks old. Then I had a chance to try it nine days old in the bottle and uh, it blew my mind. And ever since then, whenever I get it and it's fresh, it's always very tasty. So I'm hoping this one is quite tasty. It's three weeks old, so we should be fine. Now, hops in this one, um, they are using Amarillo, Centennial, and uh, I believe it's Simcoe. Yeah, I think it's Simcoe. So some older hops, you know, old school hops. And um, I'm here for it because I like all of those hops. Anyway, let's give it a pour. We'll try to remember to read the back of the label because it's kind of cool. And uh, yeah, let's give it a pour here. So, uh, you know, I usually say when it comes to my mythical beer bucket list, I really don't know what beer specifically would be on that list. Well, I'll tell you right now, dinner from them is on the list. And dinner seems to be a little easier to get nowadays than it was when it originally came out. So who knows, maybe at some point I'll be able to get a bottle of that or try it on draft or something. But yeah, so this this has that old school, you know, East Coast IPA look, just American IPA look. It has that like burnt orange, uh, deeper orange color. Hold up to the light. Yeah, it's, it's very vibrant when you hold it up to the light. On the camera, it's gonna be more dull. Um, it has a decent clarity, like I can see the shadow of my hand through it, but it's not murky and turbid. It just has a little bit of murk to it, right? It just has a little bit of haze to it. On camera, it's probably look hazier than it, what it does in person. Has a finger of a super creamy off-white uh, colored head. In the Treehouse uh, Tiku, it looks fucking dynamite. Like that looks just like a dynamite old school uh, East Coast IPA, it really does. It looks beautiful. Let's get a nose. <sighs> yes. Huge, vibrant citrus. Like, I'm talking like blood orange, mandarin orange, like a very complex orange character. There's uh, grapefruit, like a like an over-ripened kind of, um, like an over-ripened like mango, I would say as well. Yeah, so tons of different orange, maybe a tangerine, dare I say tangelo. Uh, there's grapefruit, there, there's mango. Maybe a touch of pineapple. But it also has this very distinct, like, earthy kind of floral character in the nose. I do get a little bit of the malt, uh, like a little bit of like a bready kind of malt sensation. And it might be coming from the yeast, but I'm getting a touch in it. And a lot of times people will say either, like, I feel like when they when you get something that's a, that's a you know, an old, not, I should say old school, it's just an IPA, whether it's like a hazy, uh, a Vermont, uh, you know, uh, even... New England, um, or even a new school, just American IPA, a lot of times the yeast can produce certain characteristics. Some people get bubble gum out of like treehouse beers. Uh, some people get like cotton candy. I get a lot of times I get like a confectionery sweetness vanilla. I'm getting that here. Not big, but it's noticeable. So a little bit of like a vanilla tinge, right? So it's only almost giving me orange cream school vibes, but not in which it, like not in the realm of what you think. Like it just not doesn't smell like super sweet orange creamsicle. It's just like that orange creamsicle like aroma without like an overbearing sweetness. Uh, it's just, it's really fresh smelling. It's because it's three weeks old. It smells really good. I want to get into it. Cheers, everyone. Very nice. Very nice. 
Despite it being three weeks old, I'm getting something on here that indicates that like it's, it's a bit older, right? But it's not, because it says right on the side here, um, drink this beer fresh within 90 days of the stamped born on date. And the stamped born on date is February 6th of 2024. So this is quite fresh. The reason why I say it, I'm getting a little bit of like a, getting a little bit of like a, a black tea character. It's not big or anything, but first sip I noticed it. So it's almost like, like a, like an orange black tea, <laughs> but not again, not that big. Anyway, let's go back. Buying this is medium touch or medium body, nice. The mouthfeel has that old school, you know, IPA mouthfeel. It's uh, crisp on the palate, so like moderate carbonation, but it's smooth as well. Um, very clean tasting beer too, which is kind of crazy, but it, but, it, but it's quite clean on the palate. Uh, up front, I get that bready kind of malt character. Yeah, bready malt character. Right after that though, tons, waves of citrus. And I'm talking, again, blood orange, mandarin orange, Tangelo, tangelo more than anything. So it's like that tangerine kind of uh, grapefruit hybrid. Very intense. It's juicy, but like kind of restrained in the juiciness. So it, so it has a juiciness to it, a zestiness to it. Tons of citrus, very complex. And it's in my face. As it passes through about halfway uh, through the palate, I get that, that kind of like ripened mango. Um, there's a touch of like a, a pineapple. Maybe even a little bit of a pear. And then the finish... It has this nice earthy floral kind of finish, maybe a touch of pine resin. And again, that earthiness is kind of, again, like it has like a black tea kind of vibe. But again, it's not too big. It's just, I have to mention it because you got to be honest. Um, this finishes with a substantial dryness. This is straight on, you know, full on dry. Like this is, this is, this is very dry. Uh, it has a mild to moderate bitterness, more smack dab in the middle. But if I had to say it's approaching one or the other, it's approaching moderate. Not a sweet beard, honestly, to begin with. 7%, you really can't tell. Try to pour the rest in here. See if the uh, there's any goodies or anything at the bottom. Fit it all in there. And, uh, man, this brings me back. Like, it's there's so many good things about this beer. I love that complex citrus note. I love the fact that I can tell there's, like, different oranges and the tangelo and everything. Um, the body being, uh, you know, quite nice. The mouthfeel, again, while it's old school, it does have a little bit of, like, that smooth kind of feeling that a lot of these beers nowadays have. Maybe not creamy or anything. I really dig that earthy, floral, like, resinous pine finish. The only detriment to this beer is, again, that, that tea character that, again, it's not that pronounced. It's not that prominent, but it's definitely noticeable. And a lot of times I get that. In hot four beers, it means, you know, the beer is a bit older. That's typically when I get that, that kind of tea note, it's usually the beer is like, you know, four or five, six months old. That's not the case here. This one was kept fresh in, you know, and kept cold in a cooler. So it is what it is. Um, it doesn't dis like detract from the beer and it doesn't distract me as I drink it until like the finish, but it definitely enough to knock this one down a little bit. So the first time I had this, I gave it four out of five. Uh, the second time when it was nine days old, I gave it a 4.5 out of five. This one on tap. Since then, I've had, you know, different batches. Most of the time, they've been pretty much in that 4.5. But most of the time, I'm buying it. It's fresh. And this one isn't hitting as well as that, the 4.5 batches, but it's hitting a little bit better than the four batches. So uh, I got to be, you know, honest with my rating. I think it's a delicious, old school, classic um, IPA. However, that T note, a little bit of a letdown. And it might not be overall as vibrant as, as I would like. That said, this is still really fucking good. And I'm glad I picked it up. I'm glad I reviewed it. And I'm going to have to give an appropriate score. So lunch from the main beer company. I'm going to give this a low 4 to 5 and go 4.2 out of 5. I think that's where it lands for me. It's almost smack dab in the middle of, you know, typically when I get a great batch of this or uh, that first one, which was around a 4. Uh, this is really tasty. But... That tea note is kind of weird, and maybe it's just my terrible palate today. It usually it is my terrible palate in general, but you know it is what it is. You got to be honest, and I wish this tasted like the 4.5s I've had in the past because those were just bonker. So, bonker, bonkers, plural, Joe. 
Anyway, let's read the back here, because why not? Lunch is a finback whale that was spotted off the coast of Maine as early as 1982. Her dorsal fin looks as though a bite has been taken out of it, adding to her distinctive character. We dedicate this beer to her persistence and determination. That's pretty cool. And that says we support organizations that rescue, rehabilitate, and release wildlife as well as protect endangered animals and their habitat. It says thank you for helping us to do good through a great beer. Well, you uh, 1% for the planet member. Pretty cool. Um, I like what a main beer company stands for, for the most part. You know, I mean, they, they just do great stuff um, with their beer. And I've had a lot of other awesome beers from them. So I got to review more. However, brings me the price point and um, availability. Price point on this. $7.99 for that bottle. So we're talking $8. Typically, you know, these beers have not changed price, which is good, you know, with inflation, everything going on. But uh, these have always been in like the, the $6 to $8 range, depending where you're buying uh, them, you know, what bottle shop. And it's nowadays it's tough. And, and you know, to here's the thing. If you get a four pack of this, the, they sell them in single bottles. Let's say you buy a four pack of this. You're talking $32 for a four pack. Um, that is crazy expensive. And compared to a 16 fluid ounce uh, four pack, um, you know, you're going to get what, like three more ounces or so. That's crazy expensive. It really is. So that's why I don't buy a lot of their stuff anymore. It is It is, it is pricey. Do I regret, regret um, buying this for $7.99 to review it? No. Would I buy this again $7.99? Probably, because I know this is a delicious beer, um, depending on, you know, the batch variation and whatnot. But a lot of their other beers, I will not pay, you know, six, seven bucks for, you know, it's just, it is what it is. But we'll see. I'll probably review more from them, but they are a bit pricey, but beer is pricey. So to each their own, I'm sure a lot of people buy this for, you know, seven, eight dollars a bottle. And I'm sure it's, you know, the price point, um, your mileage may vary depending upon where you live here in Buffalo, New York, New York State, we're more expensive. So it typically is a little bit more expensive. So it is what it is, but uh, it's definitely a pricey beer. And availability, I have no idea with uh, <laughs> main beer company. They do have the uh, refund here for the bottle. Um, let's see, Maine, Massachusetts, Vermont, Connecticut, New York, Delaware, Iowa, Michigan, and California. So I guess they're at least in those uh those states and um i'm sure they're in a lot of other states uh at this point I, i've seen people on on tap check it in i'm like whoa you get i think like people in illinois get get their stuff i'm pretty sure so you know if you want to grab their stuff they might have a beer finder on the website i have no idea i love the old school labels too just so like plain jane I, it's pretty crazy anyway if you've had this one before post in the comment section let me know what you think about this one if you had dinner before how does dinner compare one of my again bucket list beers if i sat down on constructed bu bucket list that would definitely be on it and uh seven percent alcohol uh you really can't taste it i don't feel it maybe, maybe a slight warming into the chest but nothing uh, substantial so uh i'm happy i finally reviewed a beer from the main beer company and uh yeah, we're going to shut this one down. Appreciate everybody stopping by for another beer review here on the Beer Patrol to the next one. Cheers.